Hello, my name is Eric Ford, and I'd like to talk to you for just a few minutes about the measurement and construction of scales. And by scales, I mean survey scales. These are often used to measure things like customer satisfaction or in healthcare, patient satisfaction. And they're traditionally built with the five point Likert or Likert scale, with five being I strongly agree, uh, one being I strongly disagree. And presumably, in a scale with odd numbers, you will have something like a three that's neutral, where you neither uh, agree nor disagree. You need to be very careful with this, particularly when people use 10-point scales. Uh, a 10-point scale is, in fact, an even-numbered scale where you're not supposed to be giving the neutral option, but people will take five as the midpoint. And this actually throws off a lot of uh, research done with 10-point scales. So be very careful about how you set your scales up. If you don't want to have a neutral option, it's better to use either a four or a six-point scale. And many people prefer seven-point scales for their longer Likert-like items. And here you see an example of a homework that I give in one of my classes. And the questions are, I am pleased with the medical services I receive for my HMO, etc. And that'll be on a five-point scale with uh, five being I'm very pleased, one being I'm not pleased at all, something along those lines. So that's what my homework looks like. I'm going to give you an example of a slightly different one. Uh, these were to an Ida, a survey we did on primary care funded through a state department. And uh, we were asking the people who work there how they felt about their work. And the question is, is this scale of five items, how motivated am I, am I to work? What's its impact on the program on my job? Does the program improve quality? Does it improve the appropriateness of care? In other words, are people getting care in a more timely and effective manner? And what was its actual impact on my department? And then you see I've created a five-point summarized scale here, which sums the uh, rows here. And that's if I think these are all talking about the same thing. In other words, they're all measuring the same idea. This summated scale should work very nicely. But how do I go about checking that? Well, in a more, uh, how shall I put it, sophisticated analysis, I might simply take my scale item. So I'm going to go ahead and here I'm hitting Command, Control, C. And you'll see that it's copying this. And I would then take these and put them in a spreadsheet, or excuse me, in a data analysis program. In this case, uh, I'm using SPSS, which is something our students can have for free. And then I would type in motivation, impact on, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to go job, because this is a variable name, and I'll type in impact like that. Then I'll go uh, qual, and I'll do improvement, IMP shorthand. Let's see. Uh, I'll go appropriateness, improvement, so this is an improvement measure. Uh, and then my last item is department impact. So I've got two impact items, two improvement items, and a motivational item. And then what am I going to do? The way the hardcore researchers would go about this is they would do something called a factor analysis. And I'm using SPSS here. And for students at most schools, you can get this through the university for free in a student pack. And it'll include these functions. And then what I'm going to do is a factor analysis. And I'm going to put all these things into the factor. Descriptives. I'm just going to go ahead and take the standard here. Extraction. Correlation matrix. And I'm going to do that because I'm going to show you a simpler way to do this in uh, Excel that'll be uh, useful for some of you. Uh, in terms of the rotation, I'll go ahead and do it none this time, but for a variety of reasons you may want to do it slightly differently. And I'll hit OK. And you see it's working. And here's what it gives you. is something called the total explained variance and there's something called eigenvalues. And again, I don't expect my students to do this. I'm just showing you conceptually how we would do it uh, in a real statistical package. 
And the standard here is the eigenvalue 1. So any eigenvalue, which is this total number here, greater than 1, is considered a dimension. And what is this telling us? It's telling us that this scale actually has two dimensions. In other words, it's measuring two things. And what are those two things? Well, I can then come down and look at each component. And I see that motivation is negative, And the quality improvement also has negative as well as those are fairly significant in this second component. So what does that mean? I think that motivation and quality improvement might actually belong to a separate item, whereas job improvement, uh, appropriateness improvement, and department improvement are all positive and fairly strong in this component. So that's the actual hardcore analysis. Let's see if we can do this in sort of the uh, statistics light version. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and take my five, I'm going to take my data including my five point summated scale and highlight it and then I'm going to come over to my stat plus program and again most of you have found your stat plus program by now and I'm going to go to statistics Let's see, and I'm going to use my basic statistics, and I'm going to do a linear correlation. All right, and then it's going to ask me to highlight the same fields, so I'm going to do that. Hit enter back over here. You see it's got it. I'm going to go to my, and it says, notice I've got labels in the first row, and I did pick up the labels, so I've checked that box. Preferences, aerial, display, decimals to the five. I really don't need five decimal places. I'll just do three. Uh, alpha value, five percent. The default on mine was two percent, but five percent is the norm, and there are no missing values, so I'm not even going to worry about that. And then I'm going to click OK. And you see it's calculating, calculating, calculating. And with my particular program, it happens to op open it up all in a new window. And it gives me lots of information. What you should see in the diagonals, meaning these columns here, are ones. The item is perfectly correlated with itself. And that's what is to be expected in a correlation. Now, this is my software, and it spits out a lot of extra numbers. What I'm really interested in is only this Pearson correlation coefficient. And I've taken the liberty of coming back over to my other spreadsheet and copying those in here just on a one-by-one -one basis. So again, you see motivation here and here is correlated with itself impact on job, impact on job, etc. So then down at my five item scale, I want to see what else is correlated together. And you'll notice that motivation does not really hang in very well with my uh, five item scale. Again, perfect correlation is one, meaning they are the same thing. A 0.72 means that these are 72% correlated. In other words, this impact on job is a major contributor to this five item scale. So I'm going to go ahead and do this in sort of a stepwise fashion and I'm going to take out motivation from my scale. So what have I done? I've got a new sheet over here. All right, and I've created a new sheet with just the four items that I think are going to be meaningful. And I'm just going to reformat these for you here a little bit. so that you can see them easier. And now I come down and I run the same correlation, this time with four items. And again, I had to sum the scale. So this is just summing these four items. And what happens next? Well, we see that this improvement on quality item 
has a very low correlation. Again, you may recall from our earlier version, go to the output, that motivation and improvement on quality were negatively correlated. So you see, even using something as simple as SPSS, I can do a form of a factor analysis. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to go one more step and I'm going to drop down to a three item scale. And again, I'll do the same thing. You notice I'm just reformatting here to make it a little nicer. You see me do this over and over. This way you get a sense for what's going on. I'm going to wrap the text. Then I'll just open up these cells. Okay. Now I've created a three item scale where I'm just summing again the three items and then I run another correlation analysis and again we still see that things are perfectly correlated with themselves and when I look at the scales within the items look every item is highly correlated with the three item scale so I might safely say that these three items all go together all right? And I think that that's going to prove to be true. And as a matter of fact, you saw when I used the more sophisticated analysis that these three items, job impact, and look at the numbers, by the way. Let's come down here and look at the numbers side by side. 0 0.839, 0 0.894, 0 0.892, 0 0.92. Again, we're very high numbers, 0.918. Very high numbers, and they're patterned somewhat similarly. And so now I'd say that this is my scale and I would by the way go ahead and then I'm going to do one last step I might go and do a two item scale I didn't carry this out to the logical end here I apologize looking at the other two items remaining and see if they belong together so that's how I analyze a scale and that's just the math of it I haven't gone in and actually discussed what each of these measures might mean but that's something you should do Thank you very much. I hope this helps in analyzing your scale using Excel.